All right, here we are near Five Islands up on an old wood road uh, in the mountains. And there is an added up here that we're going to go check out. And uh, the boys are just getting ready. And we're going to head off into this field to that big mountain over there. And after a very long hike, and down in the valley on the other side in a river, there is a beautiful adit for a barite mine. Let's go. Walking through the forest, you come across, of course, these uh, sorry, signs. <laughs> Department of Mines and Energy say dangerous, hazardous area. And of course, another great hint that you're close. So you look on this sign, there is a mine here, down. Of course, it's way down. But we're going down to the Brook River level. That's where the added is. Here's the river down in the valley, and the added is just on the other side. Let's keep going. So once you get to the other side, there's a, uh, a little chasm of uh, mine water that's coming down to the river. It's kind of a hint that something's going on from up above. And up in there is the uh, the opening. Okay, just climbed up the hill a little bit here. And if you look, this trench of flowing water goes right up there in the distance. You can see the opening and a nice yellow DNR sign waiting for us. Let's keep going. There it is with a little chasm of water coming out. Right down to the river. Let's see what we've got here. There's a little bit of water in it. And there it is. Yeah, she's not very big from the outside. We're going to have a look once we're inside. Up from the riverbed. It's way up here, too. Danger, danger. All right, here we are inside. Quite a lot of uh, your breath makes humidity mist. But uh, yeah, this one's a bit scraggy. It doesn't look so solid, but a uh, little bit of water, nothing special, maybe eight to 10 inches deep at best. And we're just gonna rubber boot it. Looks like the end up there, but uh, we're gonna go check it out. All right, here we are coming up here. We're up out of the water now. Oh, it continues. It goes into a stope. Here they come. Yeah, it takes a hard right turn here and goes into what looks like a small stope. And the wall's covered in this milky, creamy. Can you reach out and touch it? Does, is it soft or hard? Solid. 
Yeah, it looks like like porcelain. All right. Oh, look at that. Wow. We're coming up into a Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming into a stopey area. Here's those timbers holding things up. A real neat configuration in here. Timbers sort of holding up uh, in two directions here. There's like 15 million tons of rock on top of us right now, so I think those timbers are doing it. <laughs> They're more intact than some of the other ones we've been in, though. Yeah. They're as big as telephone poles almost. That goes down in there, and that's below the floor here. There's Beer bottle down in there. There's looking back down to where we came from the drift down back to the entrance where it takes the right hand turn. Like I say, it's uh, it opens up really big in here. Is the top, they made a, uh, they put a drift going up and this is holding back. This is holding back all of that. If you look up in the ceiling, there's these weird caverns like this with these black crystals forming. Look at that. Looks like black quartz crystals. Okay, we found the geocache in here. It's actually hidden inside the mine. And open that up, see what we find here. Magic baking powder. All right, maybe it's not a geocache because we're finding there's no pencils or medallions or souvenirs. Let's Correct. see what it says. Duncan, hold on. Or Eureka Bearite Mine. Discovered by J. Marsden Corbett born 1809 and son George Stalling Corbett born 1844 sons Joe Lornan and Stan uh Lons and Joe then it looks like a family it says tree. a family tree Edith C visited 1975 uh, last Carol visit. G, last visit, Martin C, 2012. Something on Larry Brandon, Carol C, and Helen Tyson, July 16th, 2012. <clears throat> in a magic baking powder cup. Inside the mine. Inside the mine, hidden up here in some, uh, and yeah, we're putting, <clears throat> putting back the, uh, the can in that little nook where it was. Some interesting, uh, some interesting minerals here surrounding it too. We've discovered down in this stope that there is a tunnel that goes below the floor here. If you look, <clears throat> see it there? Yeah, it goes. Yeah, we're gonna have to check that out. We're, we're finding directions folks going everywhere here. They made tunnels up and down and on angles and so here I'm off the uh, I'm off the beaten path now. I'm I'm actually down in one of the stopes below the floor, and here's this tunnel we were just looking at. It just goes down, and we're gonna scrabble down in there and see what we find. All right, I just came down from the uh, the stope there on the upper level, and uh, I came down this little crawl space. And there's some busted logs and things, but it opens up in here to a whole nother uh, drift that heads on a downward slope. And we're going to take a walk and see where this goes. There's an old paint can. Now this is uh, this is not hard rock mining, folks. This one's a bit uh, bit sketchy. The walls are like loose, crumbling concrete, and it literally looks that way. Just pure pale gray. Not one hard rock in sight. You can literally claw at it with your fingernails and it'll scrabble into your hands. Holy shit. Yeah, just don't step on that board. Yeah. Because that's a false floor on logs. Yeah, you're right, it is, isn't it? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, there's definitely another level that was down here. Um, 
I'm zoomed in with my light a bit so you can see around, but uh, wow, there's a whole nother drift down in there. Very blue. I can see a coin down in there, like a quarter or something on the bottom, but that's at least eight feet deep. Crystal clear spring water. On this side, uh, there's a ladder going down into the water like that. And it's got the blue on it as well. And the drift just goes way over in there. Very interesting. Very interesting. Deep as hell, holy God. It's like an underground lagoon, but it's, uh, it's just another level below the one above, but it is nearly full of water. Um, probably within six to 10 inches of the ceiling. So here's looking back up the, uh, the tunnel from the, uh, the lower level here at the ladder. So this was basically the, uh, the decline to get down to it. Here's the uh, rusty old bucket that was on the way. Beautiful little artifact you find down in here. All right, so there's sort of the central hallway again. This is really difficult to show the way it's laid out, but uh, there's a drift that goes up, literally up from the floor here. Here's, here's my boots. If you uh, look up, it's uh, that's a good eight feet above my head, so you have to kind of climb this uh, this dirt wall here and get up there. It looks like a whole nother, maybe a third level. And from up there, if you look down, there's also more stoping down in here, slightly below the middle level. Went way in there. <laughs> no kidding. We've lost cell, cell phone service in here, folks. Uh-oh. I've got no data. I, I can't get on the internet. And someone's been in here because there's an old uh, six volt lantern battery as well as some big eight and Pepsi cans, Dasani water, all these openings like little geodes, all crystallized with their little pointed teeth of crystals. Let's go in here, folks. Uh, looks like a cave in, but it, it was once a, a drift by the look of things. So we'll take a peek in here and just see what happened. We'll go against the, we'll go against the back wall there and see what we see. All right, this is the back wall and uh, there's the ceiling. And it does look like it continues, but it doesn't really, because if you look up, it goes up into an end and there it is. All right, here's that upper drift. I'm gonna go and check that out. It is said to just end. All right, and here's up in that upper drift. It does go for approximately, I don't know, 30, 40 feet and it just ends down there. It's an awful muddy climb here to get up in there. So I'm just gonna give up and just uh, take this last shot of down in here because it's much the same. And here's the wide view. Yeah, there's a whole nother drift up there. I'm not gonna get up there. Really? Yeah. So there's more discoveries up in there. There's a, a platform right there. And this, uh, this timbering. Oh, there we go. All so right. it is another drift up in there. Yeah. yeah. Here's another shot up in that, uh, that drift that goes off to his left. Um, Unfortunately, we can't get up over this ledge to get at it. Plus the timbering's getting pretty weak and moist. So the pink quartz is uh, spilling water. This is one of our water sources into the mine. All right, we're on the way out. Here we are at the turn. There is the mouth. Ow. A little bit of water. <laughs> we're hitting our heads. That's why we wear helmets. Yeah, a little bit of water to slop through here. Oh, banging our heads still. Ow, ooh, ow, ooh. Ow, oh. Ow, shit, ow, oh. Here we come. Squeeze through this little rat hole. And we're back out into the world. And the lens is gonna get foggy in the humidity because it's icy cold in there. And here comes the boys. <laughs> we made it. So that ends our visit to this uh, adit here near Five Islands. 
takes quite a hike to get here, but uh, and we thought it was going to be much smaller. But uh, it was quite extensive inside. Very, very impressive. Lots of uh, lots of things to see in all different directions and multiple levels and sunken, flooded ones. So the boys are getting ready to go home. We got a long hike back to the vehicle, and uh, that's it. We'll see you next time.